Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting this autumn hedgerow scene with hawthorn berries and lots of tangled undergrowth. Um, it's going to be an impressionistic sort of semi-abstract painting. Um, so let's start off with a nice sort of wet in wet wash. The first thing I did was to draw in just some little clusters of berries and very simply um, just a few twigs and stems and stalks and things and then mask them out with masking fluid. Once the masking fluid was dry I laid my board flat and um, started to just lightly wet the page with a brush and some clean water leaving plenty of dry areas um, and then water spraying the page as well to just get some little faint droplets as well as the brushed on um, water. So that should give me some interesting effects as I pour on the paint. Now this is um, just simply watercolour paint that I've made up with quinacridone gold and lots of water and I've poured it onto the page and I'm spreading it around with the brush. I'm going to do the same with some sap green. It's fairly well pigmented because I want a nice rich background. Not too dark, but I don't want it to dry really pale. So I'm exploiting the wet in wet technique here and moving the paint around, but making sure that I keep my um, unpainted areas of unpainted paper and then tipping and tilting the board here and there. And that's giving me some beautiful wet in wet blends of my two colours. Laying the board flat again, I can then continue to sort of manipulate the paint around, but still trying to keep the interesting marks that the drips and dribbles of water and the blends of paint are giving me. And you can see how the areas where I've masked out the berries with masking fluid are standing out and they will be preserved white so I can get a nice bright red for my berries. Um, using a tissue, I can dab any areas out that are too wet and then continue carefully pulling out and accentuating effects that I like um, that will give me hints and suggestions of the um, brambles and the background and the leaves and the stems of the hawthorn bush. And now I'm going to leave it to dry completely. I'm using Milford paper today. It's cold pressed, it's 140 pounds weight and it's taped to my board. And my board will either be flat like this or at an angle of 45 degrees when I need gravity to help me paint. So I've just allowed it to sit and settle for a while and just before it dries, I'm going to use really rich perylene green, um, very dry paint, hardly any water at all, but just enough to get it to flow. And I'm touching it into the very wet areas around the masked out berries. What this is doing is introducing some dark behind where I'm gonna have my bright focal point berries. So putting in the dark green while it's still wet, uh, but not too wet, will just allow the wet dark green to, to diffuse into the paint that's already there, if you see what I mean. And I think you can see it slowly diffusing and creeping and softening into those greens. But what it's doing as I work around the masked out areas is, is it setting me up some nice dark shadows which should serve to really make my berries pop when I come to paint them in. And then once I've got enough darks in, I shall leave it to dry completely. And this time I'll leave it to dry flat on my table like this. And then once it's dry, I can lift it up to 45 degrees again. And here it is, um, I'm afraid it's, a little bit bleached out by the sun because the sun's coming in through the windows. It's a little bit brighter than this, but I like the way it looks. And you can see that I've added some leaves across the top right corner. Um, I'm going to continue adding leaves with sap green and a little bit of perylene green um, across the painting. Um, I know it looks really drastic at the moment, but there's a method to my madness. Um, I'm quickly getting in these really wet leaves. Um, 
because my board's at 45 degrees, they're becoming darker towards the bottom as the paint drifts down the bottom of each leaf. It's giving me some nice shading. Working very quickly, um, I can then go in with the e, um, plastic card and I can create by scraping or etching through the wet paint, I can create these sort of veins of the leaves and then add in a little bit more dark and some smaller leaves using a smaller brush. Um, I've been using synthetic round brushes for this, um, Da Vinci and Polina Bright brushes. And then just before it all dries, um, again, in with the card again to etch through stems and lighter areas. And then I can pat back with some tissue and really reduce down the amount of or saturation of colour and knock it right back so that those leaves go right back into the background. So you can see I'm being left with the shapes but they are much much fainter and they'll dry back even fainter than that and just give me that nice tangled overgrown autumnal wild look that I'm looking for. Now this needs to dry completely, then I can remove all the masking fluid and reveal the stems and berries. Now here it is, I've removed the masking fluid and I'm just brushing it off with a soft dry brush to make sure there's no crumbs of latex from the masking fluid left on the painting. Before I start to paint in the berries, I'm going to mix up a mixture of French vermilion and alizarin crimson, which should give me that lovely bright deep red that's got both sort of yellowy tones and almost sort of um, violet undertones as well. And using a small calligraphy brush, I'm going to paint in each one of my berries individually, uh, but very loosely, very roughly. But the most important thing for these berries is to make sure that I leave a white unpainted spot uh, sort of top right because I'm imagining my light source um, coming down from above towards the right and if I have that little light spot on each berry then the overall impression should add to the shape and form of the berries and also because my board's at 45 degrees and I'm using quite rich paint the paint will run down towards the bottom of each berry and will pool up there and so it'll end up being darker at the base of the berry and lighter at the top without me having to paint. There should be just that subtle change in tone that should help to give me a sort of rounded looking shape. I won't show all of this because it takes a little while to do this, but I think the effect is, is worthwhile taking time over. So I'll just show a couple more. So going around the base of the berry first with the point of the brush, then around the top and leaving that little unpainted spot. So here are all the berries and I think they stand out beautifully because of course red is the um, complementary colour to green so they really work so well here. And I think that's why berries can look so spectacular in the early autumn before all the leaves have died and turned to gold and brown. Against the green and the yellow with the dappled sunlight coming through they can look really attractive. I'm now using um, burnt sienna with a touch of indigo to and a sword liner brush just to suggest some of the tangled stems and branches of the hawthorn tree and other undergrowth. I'm going over some of my masked out areas but I'm leaving some of those areas white as well and going over the painted areas in some places as well. Just trying to just hint at what's going on in the background without distracting from the berries.
and I'm being careful not to overdo this and I think I just for a finishing touch need to use a small bra round brush and now the stems are in I need to bring a few tiny leaves here and there just to add a bit of variety to the size of my marks um, and to break up those large area of leaves too just using perylene green and sap green again and a small synthetic round brush and I think that's just beginning to pull it together just those slightly darker leaves but really small ones and I'm not going to overdo this because um, I think this is at the point where I'm beginning to look for things to do and I think what that means is that I'm pretty much done if I keep going then I am in danger of overdoing it but one last thing just before it's dry and finished I'm spattering on a few drops um, onto the dry painting of um, burnt sienna and then I shall spatter in a little bit of sap green not much just around the bottom left area and that just adds a little bit more texture to the painting I'm tempted to add a little bit more than this but I think I'm going to resist I quite like it the way it is um, so maybe I'll try a different painting and add a bit more spatter to that so now I shall remove the tape. Uh, removing the tape helps you to see whether or not you've got a balanced composition, balanced tones, etc, etc. Because seeing it with a clean white border um, helps you to see it as, as a full painting, almost as if it was in a mount or perhaps a, a frame. And I'm really pleased with the way my reds stand out against... Um, against the greens and the yellows. Of course, that's um, sort of colour theory working at its best with uh, red being the complementary colour to green, um, which is one of the reasons why these berries stand out so well. Well, I hope that was helpful and I hope you enjoyed this demo. I really enjoyed painting it. Uh, let, let me know what you think in the comments. I don't always get the chance to um, reply to all your comments, but I do try to read them all. Um, and thank you so much to my wonderful Patreon group who support this channel. And I'll see you again soon. And happy painting. Bye.